Okay. So what's your name? My name is Maria Terry. Okay. And what are the names of your parents? Uh, my, my father was uh, Federico Rosales and my mother uh, Guadalupe Sepulveda. And what about your grandparents? My grandparents, uh, uh, let me see, um, my uh, grandmother was uh, uh, from uh, uh, France uh -huh. and uh, her name was Amada Camarillo. And my uh, pa my uh, grandfather was a uh, uh, Mexican, and uh, his name was Alberto uh, Sepulveda. Okay. And where were you born and raised? I was born in Mexicali, Mexico, okay. and raised in the same place. Okay. And how many were in your family? Uh, it was uh, six of us plus my mother and my father. Okay. Three boys and three girls. Okay, and do you remember what your family did for a living? For a living, my father was an electrician and my mother was a, a, a person who makes the taxes for you. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, and we call it perito contador, you know, contadora. Uh -huh. So, uh, that's, that was it. And then, what do you remember um, about growing up, like daily life, going to school and, you know? Um, oh yes, I was very happy going to school and lucky that uh, uh, my older brother was intelligent. Yeah. And uh, he always, we were straight A's to yeah. start with because thank God uh, he helped us. Yeah. In those days, you don't have television, but we have a radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, uh, he always, after school, we, uh, we come and have, uh, we come home and start working. Right. My mother used to have a round table with uh, eight chairs. Those beautiful tables, mm -hmm. I don't see them anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, and uh, um, so uh, I was a happy girl. Yeah. You know. What do you remember about um, the schools, like elementary school, middle school, high school? What do you remember about the learning, the teachers, mm -hmm. you know? Uh -huh. Well, uh, I like to learn. Right. And I still. <laughs> but uh, uh, I was happy, you know, and, and no problem. Yeah. Uh, it was a private school. Wow. And, and, and uh, so uh, I always was busy right. uh, doing things for the school. Right. You know, I was one of those girls that liked to help. Yeah. And then uh, Mother's Day, we have a nice uh, party for, uh, at school for, for, the pa for the mothers, the same as Father's Day, Christmas. And, and guess who was singing? and playing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been the star of the school, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was the only, not the only one. It was a lot yeah. of girls. The problem was that uh, they were poor people. Okay. You know, and, and uh, we were uh, middle class. Oh, okay. But, uh, but thank both my parents' uh, work, so we always have anything we wanted. Yeah. So uh, at school, uh, before Mother's Day or the uh, the kids' uh, day, mm -hmm. the, uh, we always um, the teacher asked who can be in the play because you're gonna need buy a dress, you know, oh, right, right. a special dress from whatever, and and uh, <laughs> me. <laughs> I can, <laughs> and the poor girls. I feel sorry because they because they couldn't, you yeah. know. But uh, sometimes the 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 teachers help some of the girls oh. that that really wanna do it. That's nice. And they know. You yeah. Know. So, okay. and then the principal was my godmother. How interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I, whatever I say, I I'll, they let me do it. <laughs> 
And you know, funny thing, in those days, uh, we, the, the, the students, uh, cleaned the, the windows in the, cl in the classes, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, with paper, with pa uh, newspapers yeah. and water. Huh. And our uh, windows, they were always clean and shiny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What were your plans or your goals for the future? Like, what did you want to be when you grow up? Did you know that you were going to come to America? Um, did you have um, a career in mind? Did you want to go to college? Uh, my father and my, my mother, they always asked, you know, everybody went to uh, be a professional, but not me. I want to be dancing. I want to be with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> and they let me. Yeah. You know, whatever you want, because if, if we tell you you're going you're gonna to be a, a doctor or something, then you're going to be a lousy one. Yeah. You know, because you don't, they're forcing you to do things. Right. And my parents were the kind of uh, people, they don't like to force you. Right. So, uh, um, they, then they, I was... Uh, old enough to, to know what I wanted. And then I says, I want to be a beautician. Okay. <laughs> so they find out a, a, a place where they teach you there. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, the, the, the owner was my, my dad's uh, uh, boss wife. <laughs> so <laughs> had connections <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and so, did you know that you were gonna eventually immigrate to America, or was that something you decided at an older age? Mm -hmm. No, I never, I never thought about uh, coming to America. You know, mm -hmm. but I wanted to learn uh, English okay. because my father speaks six languages and my mother seven languages. So, uh, you know, I wanted the, the one that I wanted to learn was English. Mm -hmm. But it was, for me at that time, was so hard. Yeah. But I says, I'm going to do it. I don't know when, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and look at me now. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> so when I came to this country, I couldn't speak English at all. No. You know, people ask, how are you? Good morning. What are they saying? What are they saying? <laughs> yeah. What are the major so, differences yeah. between Mexico and America? Uh, well, um... I was lucky to, to marry a, a nice American man. Name? Uh, Joseph. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, Nuno. And, and the, uh, so he had a good job, mm -hmm. you know. What was his job? Uh, he was an uh, inspector of uh, uh, parts for, for cars. Oh, okay. And... Uh, so he, he buys and sells nice cars. So I always, when I came to this country, I was 22 years old, and I had my license already, you know, in Mexico. So at that time, uh, the license uh, was good enough in America. Okay. Now, now later, no more. Mm -hmm. But it uh, doesn't uh, bother me. It doesn't. You know, yeah. I was driving and everything. Um, so, do yeah. you consider yourself American, or do you do you more identify with being Mexican or Mexican American? Well, I'm a, a Mexican American now. You know, for the benefit of my kids, when their dad passed away, mm -hmm. I said, "Uh, uh, I'm gonna become American citizen, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go to school at night." Mm -hmm. And I did. Yeah. So what? Was there, what made you not go back to Mexico after my grandfather passed away? Just the fact that you wanted your children to... Uh, well, my family was very small, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, since I have uh, uh, six, uh, it was six of us, uh, five uh, passed away, young, very young. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was dead then and everything. So, and then my father was not even, not, not, my mother was 60 years old when she passed. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and the, the rest, not nobody 70. Nobody wow. got up to 70. I guess I, I'm still lucky. Yeah, the magic one. 88. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, what are major cultural differences you see between Mexico and America? Um, I think uh, Americans are uh, the ones that I know mm -hmm. are very aggressive. Is your what was your um, understanding of the American dream? Like, what did you think before you came here, and then what was it like when you came here? Was it the same as what you thought it would be? Okay, when uh, when I first uh, came here, I uh, I used to cry a lot because I miss my family. You know, right. they were very happy and together all the time and. So having a good time and right. going to school or whatever, and uh, so um, the difference was that I miss them so much. Right. You know because uh, uh, my uh, husband was uh, family uh, kind of don't like me because I I was trying to learn and I was driving the only one in those days. Yeah. Uh, Women don't drive in, in right. here, you know, in Mexico, <laughs> trucks and you name it. <laughs> yeah, but um, that was uh, the thing that I uh, can remember. So after my grandpa passed away, um, how did you uh, provide for your family? How did you, um, like, find housing and stuff after... Okay, when uh, when we got married, mm -hmm. when, uh, when I got married with my uh, kid's father, mm -hmm. uh, he was in a service. So they have they have uh, uh, a special uh, thing going to buy a house for the for the for the servicemen. Okay, and of course he applied right away. So and uh, that was. Uh, Let's see who, who I only have uh, Chula. Mm. Wow. No, none, none of the kids yet. No, and then so I live here in uh, sixty-five years in this the same house. Nice. So no problem. Yeah, no problem. Um, so what was it like making friends? Did you feel accepted? Did you feel like there was segregation? Because you were a woman coming from Mexico, or I mean, how did how did you feel? You were no. being treated. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I was treating okay. You know, I like people. Yeah. And and uh, I like to learn, and I like to uh, uh, make friends. So I have no problem, no problem at all. How um, did you immigrate? Was it because you married my grandfather and then you came here, or did you come here first? and then drove here? Did you fly here? How, how did you well, do that? Like I said before, I, I, uh, I was, um, uh, let me see, um, came here to, for vacation, mm -hmm. and it's when I met him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, uh, he was cousin of, uh, my brother-in-law's was something and somebody in the family, mm -hmm. and uh, so when he met me, he wanna he start. Uh, I wanna take you to the movies, and I said okay. So <laughs> yeah. uh, that means uh, those days, you know, everybody have to go, not me. Mm -hmm. I was invited, but my two sisters have to go, and then uh, my brother-in-law, of course. <laughs> And then um, I, I uh, the next time he says, I'm, I'm gonna take you to the beach because it's a beautiful, because we stay here for a month. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day. Okay, so that means the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> so when, uh, when, uh, when he told me, uh, I wanna marry you, and I says, what are you talking about? Just because you invite me here and there, and then he says, no, because I, I like you. I like your weight. 
okay. I said, and then, uh, <laughs> and I says, but um, I says, Anna, I can tell you yes, because you have to talk to my parents first. Right. If they say, okay, then I, I, I'd be happy to, to marry you. Yeah. Okay. So 15 days later, he was in Mexico. Wow. He visiting. really wanted to marry you. <laughs> visiting. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, uh, and of course over there, you know, my parents and my brothers and uh, everybody um, liked him. He was a nice guy. Yeah. And, and uh, so, so uh, I, I, uh, 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 he says, uh, let's go here, let's go. And we, we were dating the time that he was over there because he was there for 15 days. Mm -hmm. And and then and then it, and then he got it, you know. Oh, this girl is real Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I um, uh, uh, whatever we go, you know. And then and then uh, we got married mm -hmm. in Mexico, oh. and I never spent a day with him after we got married. Never. Really. Until my father says, no, she have to be married for the church first. Oh, so yeah. we did, and and uh, and uh, but still, uh, uh, it's not yours yet until you go to Me to San Francisco where you live. Okay, so it was okay yeah. uh, with him, you know. He, he accepted. So, um, but uh, no problem, no yeah. problem. Okay. So, my next question is. Do you remember anything negative from living in Mexico and then living in California? Do you ever feel like you may have been discriminated against? Do you ever, do you remember anything negative surrounding um, being a woman or being Mexican in California? Mm -hmm. uh, no. No. Because the way, uh, I guess the way I was, you know, people accept me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of uh, uh, I met a lot of uh, Italian people, and then uh, then I uh, that time I, I understand Italian, and, and uh, they uh, almost the same language, you know. So uh, no problem. Thank God. Yeah. Um, growing up in Mexico, do you remember any discrimination or segregation there? Uh, well, there were a lot of envy mm -hmm. because both, like I said, both my parents work mm -hmm. and our life was a little bit different than the rest of the mm -hmm. neighbors and in the community where I was living then. Uh, it's, uh, like I said before, it was a lot of people. It was a factory my, and my father was the electrician there. Okay. But for me, it was easy in Mexico then, and it's easy in in America now. Mm -hmm. And it's easy, you know. And you try, well, me, I try to, to be helpful, mm -hmm. to volunteer if I can, mm -hmm. and I have. Yeah. At school especially, yeah. because I like kids. Yeah. How how would you say you stay connected with Mexico, through through family, TV, or? Uh, well, uh, I got some a couple of friends here from Mexico, and they call me quite often. Hey, uh, channel so and so is they gonna show this and there's something good. Mm -hmm. They know me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and there, uh, I have a couple of friends, but they negative. They vary living in this country, serving themselves in this country, and I still feel like, ha, I can do better in Mexico. Well, go. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing here? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that was one thing I wanted to ask you was, um, when you first, when you first came over, um, you may, may, you know, oh, actually, first, when you came over, how did you learn English? English? Yeah. Well, I start I start reading in the newspapers, you know, and then by then, when uh, when Chula and uh, Ch 
went to school. She couldn't speak English at all, you know. Yeah. So be why? Because I always speak Spanish because I didn't know the language. And then I says, ah, I'm gonna learn it. And I start looking at uh, newspapers and then watching television. And it was easy watching in television because you can see the movements and the, the, the words. So that was... Cool. And if you're smart, like some people. Going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, back to this. But the differences between Mexico and America. When you first came over, did, was there any feeling of there's more opportunities here? Than there are there, or was it the opposite? Because in a way, um, it seems as though Mexico it was far more acceptable for a woman to have a license and to be able to drive a car. Yeah. And here, you were you were uh, an outlier. It was very rare for a woman yeah. to have a license at that time, or, or at least in your community. Mm -hmm. um, so, did you feel like there were more opportunities here or less when you came? Well, where I came from, it was a lot of opportunities thanks to my parents. Not every, not everybody, mm -hmm. you know. But in my case, thanks to my parents, they both educated, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, like I said, you know, but uh, I still learning. I don't know everything yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then one thing I was I was going to ask too is um, the differences again um, that you felt in church from Mexico and in the United States because because religion played a part for sure in those earlier years and I know I know um, they weren't helping you out when you needed it most when your husband passed away yes and then you ended up going back. To Mexico to have your kids. Never. What? No, no, no. Uh, you went to uh, just for religious. You you had them baptized, I think, in Mexico. Or, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just just kind of talk about that. That that was uh, the dad idea. That was you know let's uh, let's take him and, and baptize him over there and except uh, um, Chula because uh, her. Older brother wanted to be the, the godfather of Chula, the first, her brother's the first uh, baby, you know. Did you did you feel but, any uh, any differences in in religion or church mm -hmm. in Mexico compared to in the United States? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we uh, here I belong to a group uh, for for about six years. But then I cut it because it's, it's all gimme, gimme, gimme. I see. And I says, no, yeah. it's not, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if we in the group, we're going to, to pray for, for our friends, for our families, and not to talk about people or, or gimme, gimme, gimme. But because every Wednesday was that the, the meeting. And I always go, but every time I go, at least ten or fifteen dollars I spend money that I don't have, you know. But uh, oh, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have this rifle, rifle, mm -hmm. and and uh, and uh, so it's it's five dollars a ticket, and if you buy two, they give you three tickets. So uh, all the people that are around there, it was 14 of us. They all have the money for more than whatever they ask for, mm -hmm. you know, one ticket. It's, it's, I can afford one ticket. And if they accept me that way, it's fine. If not, goodbye. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Um, are there any other things that you want to discuss or share? Any stories or that you want to share that we haven't asked you about? Any stories? Let me see. Uh, well, I uh, I wanted uh, I I I uh, have my uh, four kids. 
and I did the best I could to to be a good citizen, you know, like me, because I I think I was a good citizen, and uh, so uh, that was one of my goals. Have a good kids. So, Thank you. do you remember any stories from your parents about living in Mexico? Did they go through any um, type of discrimination or anything? Do you remember if they had ever talked about anything like that? Uh, no, the only thing I can remember was at Christmas time, mm -hmm. my mother, uh, uh, there was a, a, a factory where they make candies, all kinds of good candies. So she she always ordered 250 bags for for the kids in the community. Yeah. So she every it was 250 kids, okay. <laughs> and not including ourselves. You know, we have all the candy that we want. Thank God. But uh, it's, and then she uh, she have a, a station wagon and put the, all the bags in the station and go house by house, because all the houses was in the same uh, uh, place, you know. You don't have to go across the street or no, no. Just one big, big street. Yeah. It was a private, it was American, American uh, uh, factory, mm -hmm. but uh, all run for, for, uh, for Mexicans. Yeah. It, it, it was a, a project building, right? The people who worked in the factory lived in housing? Yes, yes. Oh. They give you the house, they give you, you know, hmm. uh, it's, it's why they, and like I say, they both work. You know? Because there was a lot of businesses and, and rich people around it, you know, the, the things like that. So it's why they, they were busy. Hmm. But my father is because he was an uh, electrician and it was the only electrician in the factory. 400 people work uh, uh, two shifts. Mm -hmm. uh, never close because of the, the you know, they, they make uh, uh, soap, they make oil, they make uh, food, uh, like uh, uh, big pieces, of, big like this. Uh, of uh, food for for uh, horses, so they they make everything there. Hmm. Those and the the uh, the, uh, uh, the owner was American, you know, Mr. Bush, and uh, he liked us so much. And uh, for Christmas, oh my God, <laughs> my mother used to put a Christmas tree. Uh, Big as them, <laughs> you know, and and uh, and she and then uh, she have more uh, uh, she baptized more kids than I ever can count in my life, so and it's, they call him uh, uh, Nina, uh, you know, but her name was Lupita. Mm -hmm. They call it Nina because they were the godmother. Mm -hmm. So uh, she so she she have presents and presents for everybody, and in some she have things that they, they make. I hope. But my father was able to when when he passed away, to give all six of us uh, ten thousand dollars, and uh, my my uh, older sister. Uh, uh, she had double, you know, and uh, and uh, so he 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 get good money, yeah. and he saves money, and and he would like I said he was able to to ten thousand dollars each of us. But in that time, ten thousand dollars is is amazing. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and six six times. Yeah, yeah, the value of that was so far greater. So he made good money. Yeah. But he was a worker. They both were. And then my my, my brother, my older brother, uh, they sent him to uh, to have uh, to become an electrician because he wanted to be like his dad. So he uh, they they he graduated from L.A. 
with honors. Yes. And uh, so he was the second man in, in the uh, factory, wow. the, the second uh, electrician to wow. help my, my dad. We're pretty light-skinned Mexicans. Uh-huh. Um, did you ever feel any difference in Mexicans, like people talking about Mexicans that were darker versus lighter? Because I, I think even you, in, until somebody speaks to you, you could probably pass as just a white person. Um, so did you, I, I don't think your experience, you really saw any racism or anything like that? No. But how about in Mexico? Was there any different, like, did people no. talk about people? Mexico, you name it, they accept it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and uh, uh, I never heard anybody, honest to God, talk about uh, uh, American uh, uh, um, Negros. Mm -hmm. ne never until I came to this country. And I says, what kind of, they talking about the, the, the colored people. Mm -hmm. They're nice. They don't put in, in uh, those days, they don't put in anybody. But I never in my life heard anybody to, and we live in the, in the uh, frontier, you know, in the Calexico, mm -hmm. El Centro, it's a, was a lot of uh, negritos. Interesting, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. But can you, uh, can you imagine, never in my life heard about anybody saying something about yeah. those people. So, so that's definitely something different. In Mexico, you, you wouldn't have heard that, but here you heard negative things mm -hmm. about black yeah. people. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's a... And there were a lot of Chinese in Mexico too. Really? And in the uh, Japanese, they have the the Chinese uh, have the vegetable stuff. In the Japanese, they have the the uh, um, tortillas. Uh, yeah, huh. the Japanese the, the tortillas, and they have uh, the ice far far. Uh, uh, Factories uh, uh, make blocks of ice because it was pretty hot in Mexicali. Yeah. So do you remember any um, times when you were here that you witnessed racism against an African American? Or is just the, the talk that you heard, oh, the yes. negative talk that people had? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, we have uh, friends... Uh, the second time that I got married, mm -hmm. uh, every restaurant in South City, they know us. <laughs> in, some, in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. so, so these people, uh, she have 18 kids, uh, and they were Cambodian. Mm -hmm. And everybody have uh, uh, business, and, uh, you know. And, uh, uh, but her mother, Cambodian, uh, she, uh, her do one of her daughters was 20 years old, and and uh, and she met and in college she met a professor, mm -hmm. an English professor. So he start dating her, and uh, and she told her mother, and she says, if you marry a colored guy, I'm gonna kill myself. Wow. And I'm gonna blame it on you, Annie. Yeah, Annie and Earl. Yeah. Okay. Huh. The, that, so that was very recent, com comparatively. That yeah. wasn't when you first got here. That was 90s. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Wow. 92. So your grandmother's name was? Amada Camarillo. Uh -huh. She and was an uh, 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 opera singer. Interesting. Beautiful blue eyes, beautiful lady. Clean and, as uh, anything. And she was French? Yes. And so how did she meet your grandfather? That, I don't know. You know. And they, do you know uh, where they lived? Mexico, U.S.? I have what? Where did they live? Uh, oh, they live in Mexico City mm -hmm. because, because since she was an uh, uh, opera singing, mm -hmm. singer, she, she, uh, one of the best places in, in, in Mexico City is in a Distrito Federal in Mexico. So she was singing there. She was uh, Spanish as well, right? Uh, well, because I know we're part Spanish. 
So the parents French. The parents were French. Yeah. But sp Spanish is part of it, no? Yeah. They were Spaniard too. She wasn't just French. Uh, uh, Spanish and in, in, in Spain and in, in French. Okay. okay. So do you remember how old you were when you went for your citizenship? I uh, about the late thirties. And can you tell me a little bit about that experience, like? What did they test you on? What was it like studying for the, the citizenship? Well, about, you know, the Constitution of the United States, of course. And uh, I liked it. I was pretty sharp then. <laughs> and uh, then when they, uh, they, it was my turn to, to get the papers, uh, they made me sign. And uh, just one thing I remember that uh, when they say, what's your name? Because my real name is Maria de Los Angeles. So he says, how about Maria Angela? Oh, that sounds pretty good. I said, they're not <laughs> the same. So, okay, that was fine. And then, uh, uh, and then he says, okay, he says, uh, we're going to start now. And uh, they, uh, they want me to count. Uh, and I did, and then, uh, and then, uh, in English, of course. Mm -hmm. And then he says, um, "Okay, now they give me a tablet, and uh, they ask me to uh, to write on uh, a sentence." Because this is how he says, uh, "It's not too long." He says, "Because uh, it's a lot of people here, you know, about uh, two or three thousand people outside." Uh, and then, uh, and then, okay, I said, I'm ready. And then uh, he says, okay, raise, uh, uh, write a sentence. And then I, I, uh, I put, you know, the, the voice play outside. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, okay, that's fine. And then he says, uh, that, uh, that's it. Because he's, oh, he says, I, I see all the, the, the papers, the, uh, what you were going to learn about the Constitution and uh, all that stuff, and then, uh, and then he says, and you, you did uh, got good grades, so that's enough for me. Oh, I says, thank you very much. Yeah. And then he says, okay, uh, you will get uh, uh, your papers in the mail. How long do, would you say that it took for you to study, and then to actually complete the test and receive your citizenship? Oh, it was um, about seven or eight months, and then uh, just, just one class, you know, at night. Did it, was it really difficult? Well, uh, it wasn't because as soon as I got home, I got my chocolates, <laughs> my pound of uh, chocolates, you know, every night. 